from the peach of the south, Atlanta, Georgia, the United States 10-Pin Bowling Federation presents the championship round of the 1991 Women's National Team USA Tournament. From the beautiful Brunswick Peachtree Lanes in the sleepy suburb of Norcross in the northeast part of Atlanta, Georgia. A pleasant good day, everyone. I'm Dave Armstrong, along with the Team USA national coach, Fred Borden. And Fred, another tremendous team for you in 1992. This process begins with 13,000 bowlers. How do we get down to our final four here today? Well, uh, Dave, we start at the local level, then they advance to the state level, from the state to the regional, and from the regional here to the national finals. We had 44 ladies start. They bowled 24 games qualifying. We then cut to the top 24 ladies. They bowled match play, head-to-head -head competition to get our final four for the television forecast today. And Mary Betke, a returnee on your team, and boy, she really was on a roll quite literally this week. Possibly the best left-handed amateur player in the United States. Very smooth, under pressure, just lays the ball and just rolls it for 60 foot. And the number two seed, last year's national amateur champion, Julie Gardner. A player that moved inside, and she played a line to, to make the show that she hasn't played in months, and she felt a little nervous, but she really hung in there and, and played well coming down the stretch. And Lucy Giovinko, she's been trying for five years, and she finally made it this year. She's been a finalist every year except the very first year. She's got the big high backswing, a lot of power, and just a real nice lady. And a lady that's been around for a long time, Linda Norrie. She's the uh, only player, I shouldn't say the only player, Maureen Webb's also a person that made the team four consecutive years, and to do that is just awesome. Well, we're going to look forward to that first match between Nori and Giovinco, and we'll also have alongside Kim Terrell, a two-time champion on the ladies' tour. Kim, what will these ladies experience being on television here today? Well, when I think back to when I was on television my first time, I was pretty nervous. I don't think I slept the whole night or, or ate the whole next day. I, I think they have to really concentrate on, on not worrying about how many people are watching at home, but just it's, it's the same as it's been all week, the same amount of people. Just make good shots and, and concentrate. Dave? Kim, we'll look forward to your comments and getting the emotion of how these players react here today. We'll be back with the opening match in just a moment. This special Sports Channel America United States Olympic program is brought to you by the National Bowling Council. We'll be back with our opening match featuring Lucy Giovinco of Tampa, Florida and Linda Nori of Concord, California. We're back at Peachtree Lanes in Atlanta, Georgia. Our first match of the day will feature Linda Nori, as you see in your screen on the right, and Lucy Giovinco. Linda Nori, the number four seed in this tournament and a veteran of Team USA. Linda Nori up first, uh, telling you, Fred, just before we started that uh, she was excited and ready to go today. You see the power and velocity. You could see that excitement. She threw that ball right in the pocket for a solid four pin. Uh, this little gal throws a 16 pound fingertip and watch the velocity she puts on. Kim Terrell is alongside. Kim, you had a chance to talk with both bowlers before they started. Right. They're both pretty comfortable, I think. Linda has a wrist injury she did earlier in the summer, so she's, it's going to take her a little while to warm up, but I think she feels pretty good. They're playing them a little different today, too. Dave? Lucy Giovinco up in the first. She was tinkering more than anyone, and maybe she's found her mark. Yes, the lanes are a little dry today, uh, drier than they've been all week during competition. And Lucy likes them when they're a little dry because then she can just wind it up, as you can see, with that big backswing and just let it fly. So I look for this to be a real interesting match, and I look for it to be high scoring. What's this big swing here? Mix 
mixes it up but leaves the seven. Giovinco uh, probably best goes with that saying if you first you don't succeed try try again Giovinco tried for so many years to make Team USA and she told me before the match that she was just absolutely thrilled to be a part of your team. Well, she tried in 87, 88, 89, 90, and 91, and now she's going to be a member in 92. God bless her. She's worked very hard. Strikes Paris Park to Giovinco. <laughs> Nori, on the other hand, has not only tried but succeeded, a four-time team member. Yes, only one other player ever, Marine Webb, to, to make the team four consecutive years. High and gets out of it with just two pins remaining. She laid that ball a little short. She looks like she lost it at the bottom of the swing. That's been the big thing she's fought all week. Uh, she hurt her wrist the bowling in the Queens tournament. And as you can see, she's taped up. Uh, we had her taped up uh, at the Olympic Festival, uh, and she's learned how to tape that wrist, and it's really helped her. She's bowled very well uh, considering such a serious injury with tendonitis. Later today, we'll also see a tape job on the number one seed, Mary Betke, who also has, in her case, her left arm taped, her being a left-handed. You know, and they were one, too, and we had some other players coming over and saying, hey, coach, did you learn how to tape? Can mm -hmm. you tape me up, too? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you can start something in our sport. Yeah, right. And we'll go from the gloves to having everybody's arm taped. Yeah, with it, throw strikes. It? Crosses over and leaves the three. We have a little saying in our sport, arm out, ball in. She just got that arm out away from her body a little bit, and that's why she missed, missed left. When you miss to the left, that means your arm's out away from your body. If you miss to the right, that means you've wrapped the ball in behind your back. Got to get that ball on line with that arm swing. Fred, we see so many different styles of bowling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this style right here. Look at this push away. Look at the power in this lady's swing. Now here it comes. Bounced out right there. Bounced out. She pulls it left of the target. You can see she's playing in between the first section. She pulled it left. Ball's going to just, she's lucky to break up the split here. She got herself a break. Ooh, and just nudged that 10 out at the last second. Yuvinko with another strike. That's coming in the third to give her a three-pin lead. Now, a bit of information for our viewers out there. You saw that ball hit the pocket. You saw the loft and the swing through. That's a 14-pound bowling ball. So when everybody says, boy, you got to use a heavy ball, this young lady's proved she's averages 200 all over the world. She's a past World Cup champion, and she uses a 14-pound bowling ball. And the fourth, a double for Giovinco. She opens up a 13-pin lead on Linda Nora, and we'll come back with our first match of the day from Peachtree Lanes in Atlanta in just a moment. Let's pick up the first match in the seventh frame for Lucy Giovinco, now leading by 25. <laughs> Linda Nori in her seventh frame came up with a 6-7 split and almost converted, but missed them both, missed that sixth on the right side. Yeah, and Lucy just is just locked right into the pocket. Uh, looks very strong. You know, this young lady's been competing on an international level and in, in all over the United States for 15 years now. Nearly two complete decades, and we really got to take our hat off. She's a World Cup champion, as we mentioned earlier, in 1976. She's quite a player. She was an alternate on the team in 1990 and ended up being a member because uh, one of your players turned professional. Yes. And, and uh, Giambanco saying, boy, it was just great to make it 
full square this year. Look at this big swing. Look at the power in this lady. Look at her stretching it out. That's athletic performance right there. It just doesn't get much better. You can't stretch it out any more than these ladies are. Nori uh, has not been able to find the target yet in this game. And, and you know, she's throwing a 16-pound fingertip, and you can see the power she can put in it. Uh, this gal's made the team four consecutive years. She's absolutely one of the best amateur players in the world. She just uh, went over to Manila, out averaged everybody, including the men, averaged 221 in Manila, and out averaged everybody. And was the runner up in this tournament last year. Runner up to Julie Gardner, who will be in the next match. The national amateur champion from uh, 91. Let's see if she can set one up here. I think she uh, is playing the lanes a little too straight today. I'd like to see her move a little bit farther left. The lanes look like they're a little drier today than they have been during the week. And leaves the solid 10. She made the adjustment. She made the adjustment, left a soft 10, but you know she's running out of frame. So uh, she's on the team, though. I'll tell you, she's such an asset to Team USA. This young lady is just a treat to be around. Everybody just loves her. Uh, her, her attitude is so great. Uh, She'll shake this loss off. As soon as this is over, she gets that big smile on her face. And she competes. Uh, see there? She just stuck her hand out and gave Lucy a clap. Uh, these people are uh, team members now. Uh, even though they want to be the national amateur champion, uh, the feeling with Team USA is very special. for Giovinco here in the opening match. That's three in a row for Lucy. And you know, uh, this is a little uh, tidbit on Lucy. You know, her and her father both are, are in the Tampa Bowling Hall of Fame. You know, father, daughter mm. in a Hall of Fame. That's that's saying something. Isn't it? You can see why <laughs> she's throwing that shot. Yeah, she carries her dad, I'm sure. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry you live. <laughs> yeah, Julio is a great bowler, too. Yes. Four in a row. Watch this shot. Watch the power she's throwing. Throws this ball. It's 14 pounds going down the lane at about 20 or 21 miles an hour. Watch her hit these pins. She'll just smash these pins with this shot and trip that four out. Coming off the wall, that's moving pins. Throwing that ball with some velocity. Second ball in the 10. Oh, that was solid. Oh, the 10 just disappeared. They just, all 10 pins gone. Mm -hmm. That's and just 258 possible for Giovinco in the opening match. You know, all the years of hard work for this young lady and getting so close, and I, and I can't count all the time. She's right there at six to eight. And, and for her to come here now and, and to bowl like this, it's the rewards. Uh, she deserves it. She's worked very, very hard. Lucy Giovinco, very impressive. Here's the second strike in the 10. Look at this shot. Just look at the pins in the air, all in the pin receptacle simultaneously. That's domino fashion perfectly. Linda Nori now running out the string in her 10. Oh, where was that earlier? Yes, you know it happens so fast. You know, you, you bowl out here, and, and all of a sudden you say, "Okay, the cameras are on." You start, and pretty soon you're in a fifth or sixth frame. If you don't get lined in, anything can happen in a one-game match in mm -hmm. our sport, and, uh, and you sort of accept that, and you move on down the road and, and go to the next turn. That's what she's thinking right now. Yeah, a 180 possible if she converts that split, but an impressive showing for Lucy Giovanco in this opening match. At 2.57. And we'll move all the way to the left here and try to make this spare. Even though she's out of the match, she's still there. She can, she's going to show us a shot here. Very good, Linda. It's a nice way to finish for Linda Nori. But Lucy Giovinco will move on into the semifinals for the National Amateur Championship for the women. Julie Gardner will be the next stop for Lucy Giovinco in match number two, and we'll have that for you from the Peachtree Lanes in Atlanta, Georgia, in just a moment.
the Lucy Giovinco with nine strikes in her first game moves on to the semifinals defeating Linda Nori 257 to 180. Now she'll meet Julie Gardner and let's go to Kim Terrell for some insight on this match. Lucy feels great. She, she says she has the lane. She's using a little harder shell ball than she used all week and she's in a lot deeper and she feels a lot more comfortable than she did earlier. So I think it should be a good match. Right. Right solid in the pocket again. Lucy hasn't been out of that pocket all day. Well, you know, and we, if you hit that pocket, your confidence level just keeps increasing as the matches go on. And those four pins and ten pins, those one-pin spares are easy to make. We have a 22-inch uh, room for error making one-pin spares, so a good player feels pretty confident when you see one standing after they throw that first shot. Covers it easily for an opening spare for Giovinco. And now Julie Gardner, the national amateur champion from last year. Yes, and, and she bowled great on television last year. She's just answered the challenge. She threw a 238 game, uh, threw every ball in the pocket. Let's see how she does today. Can't trip up the four, so I'll have the same spare to make that Giovinco had. It was good. Got her first shot off her hand, threw the ball on line, hit the pocket, got nine and a half, still wiggling down there. Look at that. This a little high. Let's see if she makes the adjustment on the next uh, shot. While it's still wiggling, she knocks it down. Yes, <laughs> we had a lot of fun with Julie this year on the team. I tell you, these gals get together uh, and uh, get those jokes going back and forth. I tell you, the ladies can be more fun than the men. I'll tell you that. Really? Yes. <laughs> Well, there goes the four wiggling again. And she got lucky to get out of a split there. A little high on both shots. She needs to move another board left with her feet. So keep the eyes the same. Move the feet to the left when you're going high. And that's what Julie needs to do. Now, I think on the next shot, you're going to see she's throwing on both lanes now. The jitters are gone. She'll make that adjustment, I'm sure. By moving left, the ball will go further right? Yes, you move to the left, but you keep your eyes at the same target. So that'll make the target line project it farther to the right. Two spares to open for Julie Gardner. Giovinco up in the second, working on a spare. And the five pin. If you notice a difference there, she lost a little off of her hand. She didn't get the fingers as she swung over the foul line. The thumb came out, and the fingers came out real quick. And she laid it a little short. And they, we say that ball had nothing on it but fingerprints. But you know what? It still hit the pocket. Mm -hmm. And that's the name in this game. Give up a little bit of the big hook for the accuracy. And in the long haul, you'll always be there. And the five pin, one of the easier spares. It's just your strike ball. Uh, just stand right there and just let it swing loose. Good crowd on hand here at the Peachtree Lanes in Atlanta. Beautiful, up-to-date facility. Well, it is. Brunswick built some beautiful bowling centers. And the people down here are really into the sport. Bowling's really grown down here in the Atlanta area. Along Jim Maxey and uh, jumping Jim Maxey, 21 PBA regional titles from this area. What a great man he is. Giovinco back on target in the third. Lucy can't throw it any better than she threw that shot. Just the great timing, the loose swing, swung it out, dropped the thumb out, let the fingers kick it just a little bit, just swung the swing right on through, put it on line, just put it right dead in the pocket. Gardner tries to answer in the third and does. And you notice she made that board move. We're watching the board numbers down there. She was standing on 19, the shot before. She moved over to the 20th board, so she had her foot on 20, and she was looking at 11 at the target errors. So that made that adjustment. Let's see if she can do it again here on 27. She did. The match is on, ladies and gentlemen. These two gals are locked into the pocket. Now it's just a matter of who can sustain it, who can feel the pressure, and who doesn't feel the pressure. 
Everybody's going to feel that pressure, right? You get into the match play situation, Fred, do you feel your opponent maybe getting on target? Well, you know, you try to block that out. You can only control what you do, so you try to block out everything else going around you and try to concentrate on what you do. And they are both concentrating well. Yavinko answers with a striker of her own, and this match is dead even. You can see why they're the best amateur players in the United States. Uh, you don't throw the ball much better than these gals just through these last four shots. Just four shots, perfectly fitted right into the pocket from 60 foot away, hitting a three-inch area, throwing a ball down there at 17, 18, 19 miles an hour. Gardner trying not to watch. A little soft on that shot, just a little bit soft. And she leaves the 4-7. Working in the fifth frame. She'll move over to the right now. And just put it on line, nice and straight. Hit that front pin. Domino it right in the four, right into the seven. She does it perfectly. A spare for Giovinco in the fifth. Julie Gardner will come up in her sixth. And we'll be back with more action from the Peachtree Lanes in Atlanta, Georgia, in just a moment. Lucy Giovinco bowling in the seventh with a 2 7 split. Watch this, this is accuracy. Just nips it, put it right where she wants it from 60 foot away. Hmm. These gals are bowling their heart out. And Giovinco is down in the match by 32. Gardner has struck from the third through the sixth. And avoids a split of her own and leaves the four. All the time talking with Julie, she's always nervous. Well, Coach, I don't know, and gives you that little feeling of unsurety. But then when the bell rings and the lights go on, she puts a ball in her hand, and all of a sudden she bowls like she's got more confidence than any player that you ever want to meet. <laughs> Just moved to the right, made that spare perfectly. You know, this young gal here has uh, been the bowler of the year four years in a row mm -hmm. in junior bowling for YABA out in California. Gardner was brought to tears last night after the qualifying rounds, realizing that she had again made Team USA. Yeah, she, she you know, some say it's harder the second time. What a live roll was on that ball. That ball just exploded those pins when it hit. That's the kind of power that Julie can put on that ball. She's got that nice swing. Swings right through. She doesn't dump the ball at the foul line. She swings right through. And, and lifts that ball out onto the lane. Giovinco now playing catch up in the eighth. Oh, tough break there for Lucy. She threw an awfully good shot there to leave that four pin. That ball was not high. Goes back to those round objects hitting mm -hmm. round objects. Yeah. A lot of this game uh, is skill, but there's some luck involved too. Yes, there sure is. Key moments, and that's when you got to talk to yourself. That little voice inside your head, what's it saying? Right now, she's going to talk to herself. Keep herself calm. Move over, make the spare. Nope. Let's look at that first ball again in the eighth frame. Watch this shot. It's just right on line. Here it is. It makes its turn. It's rolling. Makes the turn right in the pocket. Bam! Boy, that four pin just wouldn't go. About a half an inch off mm -hmm. from 60 foot. Yeah. That's the kind of game we play. Boy, now that the way you're talking about inches in this game, uh, it's going to really throw me off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just need a few lessons. That's all. A lot of lessons. What a tough break. She trips the four out that time and leaves the nine. She threw the ball in the puck. She's bowled a great game. She, she lost the one shot where she left the split. She just dropped the ball a little off her hand on one shot. Other than that, she's thrown eight real good shots. She mm -hmm. could be shooting 250, and she's shooting 
That's what we got to accept in this game, though. That's where the mental game comes into play. Brian Collins from Brunswick. Uh, they have put together so many of these fine bowling centers. We're at one this week, the Peachtree Lanes in Atlanta. And Brian Collins, uh, very instrumental in this area. He's, uh, he's really been great with the USTBF and the Team USA program. I'll mm -hmm. tell you, Brunswick Corporation has been just fantastic for us. Nice sponsor. Julie Gardner, back-to-back -back Team USA's and maybe back-to-back -back national amateur championships. Isn't that something? I think we're smelling something in the wind. You know, some people say, boy, they're in dead stroke. I like the term live stroke. Boy, the ball looks live when it hits the pins. Those pins are saying, oh, here it comes. Get out of the way. Mm. She's got a big, heavy, live roll going on that bowling ball right now. Working on that double here in the 10. First ball in the 10, and that may put it away. And she reminds me a lot of Larry Lobb, other than, than dropping the ball short. She gets through the ball better than a lobster, but her swing, when it goes through the looseness in her shoulder socket, this gal, when she gets loose, swinging it from the shoulder like a rock on the end of a string, she just gets repeating. The ball rolls real heavy, but she doesn't grab and flip and spin and, and snap at it. She just swings it through. Gardner will move on to the championship round. With another strike, we'll have a 258. Well, Giovinco did it to Linda Nori in the first game with a 257. Gardner trying to a little payback on Giovinco. She's in the zone right now. Mm -hmm. It's spelled in capital letters in that zone. She's just locked right in. She's focused. She don't know anybody else right now is in the building. Well, a 257. We've seen two of them here today. Some great playing. And you, you get the best amateurs in the United States, if not all the world, uh, on a pair of lanes that are this smooth. You're going to see some great scores. Well, Lucy Giovanko will finish in third place. Right now, she is thinking, I made the team in 92. Yes. So Julie Gardner will move on to meet Mary Betke for the National Amateur Championship. And we'll have that for you from the Peachtree Lanes in Atlanta, Georgia, in just a moment. Julie Gardner with a chance to win yet another national amateur championship by winning match two over Lucy Giovinco, 257 to 204. But before we move into our championship match, we'd like to give you a look at a new coaching program in the bowling industry. Unlike golf, where virtually every golf course has a teaching professional on hand, bowling has long suffered from the lack of available coaches. Industry leaders have pointed to this need for many years, but little was ever done. That situation is rapidly changing, however, as the United States 10-Pin Bowling Federation has implemented a certified coaching program for beginner, intermediate, and advanced players. The bowling certification program was planned long before last year's United States Olympic Committee's directive that stated all USOC members must develop a multi-tiered instructional program. As a result, the USTBF was able to put their program into place almost immediately. The first coaching certification seminar was held this summer in Las Vegas with nearly 100 participants from around the country attending. The three-day event covered the bronze level introductory program. Team USA coach Fred Borden, who designed the program, conducted the workshop. The USTBF certification program was well received by those who attended, including three-time PBA champion Bill Spigner and former WIBC All Events champion Susie Reichley. The program's great. This is kind of like a dream come true for many of us that 20, 25 years ago uh, wished we had something like this. We've talked about it a lot, and now it's becoming a reality. The way it started with Mr. Borden and his insight into the sport of bowling, it's not one-dimensional. It covers a lot of parts of bowling that were never in print before or never used teaching method-wise before. And according to attendees, it's a program they're anxious to use, even touring professionals such as LPBT champion Michelle Mullen. 
Well, as a player, we tour approximately half the year, all total, you know, in different seasons. And in the off season, it's really, it would be a good time to, um, you know, dedicate, um, well, dedicate the time and be able to, to, you know, implement the program. And uh, even maybe on the road, uh, on, on times when we travel to tournaments when we don't have two full travel days, but we have, you know, two days open, maybe I could get to the next site a little earlier and set up, you know, with the proprietor, um, you know, some time to, to implement a program on the road in different locations. The U.S. TBF Coaching Certification Program looks like it's headed in the right direction. Our goal is to have a certified coach in every bowling center in the United States. It looks like bowlers won't have to look too far the next time they need some help. For more information on how to become a certified U.S. TBF coach, write U.S. TBF, 5301 South 76th Street, Greendale, Wisconsin. Five three one two nine, and perhaps some future coaches amongst these bowlers. These are the top twenty-four qualifiers this week here in Atlanta. Also joining Team USA, Nancy Ennis and Mandy Wilson. Women Bowler Magazine, published by the Women's International Bowling Congress, sponsored this year's Sportsmanship Award. Lucy Giovinco of Tampa, Florida, was selected by the players. Making the presentation was WIBC President Gladys Banker and editor Karen Seitzma. Our next match coming up, the championship match featuring Julie Gardner, last year's champion, and Mary Betke, who has dominated this week in Atlanta. We'll be back with that in just a moment. Championship match will feature Julie Gardner and Mary Betke, and Kim Terrell has some insights. Mary says she's pretty nervous right now. She's uh, just anxious to start. She's playing the lanes about the same, a little more speed because they seem to be hooking a little more for her. So I'm sure it'll be a real nice match. Fred? Fred, would uh, Mary be perhaps a little bit more nervous knowing that Julie rolled a 257 in the semifinals? Well, she knows that she's got to come out here swinging. She can't lay back when you see a person that you know that's lined in on the lane. has got a good shot, but she's had a 10-minute break here, so we'll see. And Gardner's now slowing down. A beautiful shot to the pocket. She's got that loose swing. What? That's one of the biggest things people should work on is feeling like you have an oil can. You shoot that shoulder socket with the oil can. Keep that swing loose from the shoulder socket. Betke has dominated this week. Almost a 10-pin advantage on the field. Starts off light. I don't know if she'll be able to arc that uh, shiny ball. If you notice, that ball's very shiny. She used that because the lanes are a little drier today, but not a, not that many boards. So she's got a very shiny piece of equipment. She arced it to the left. If she over arcs that shiny piece of equipment, I don't think it'll snap back to the pocket. And how do you make this? Well, you're going to move a little to the left. We've got to hit that head pin on the right side. You've got about two inches of room for air to make this there. Just barely missed the sound. Oh, yeah, that was unlucky. That really was. When you come that close, Mary has a real nice style. Just nice and smooth, five-step approach. Just watch her just lay the ball at the foul line and just rolls the ball nice and smooth right at the foul line. Just rolls it right off. Just excellent. Look at this. Look how close. Look at the belly of the pin goes right through the neck of the other That's pin. Right. That was within a, a quarter of an inch of making that spare. Let's see if she can regroup here. Betke leaves the seven. See, and if you notice, that ball arced up to the pocket, but it didn't snap hard enough to carry the corner out. That ball just sort of hit soft, and that's that real smooth finish. So it's sort of hydroplaning on top of the lane surface, not quite biting and grabbing. 
the little holes of the porosity of the ball, those little sharp edges is what grabs the lane and makes the ball snap. And it just sort of sidewinding when it hit the pocket. The porosity of the ball. Yes, the pores, just like the pores in your skin. You learned that at the training center, didn't you? Yes, and you study that stuff, you know. Betsy gets on the board with a spare in the second. Gardner working on a strike from the first. Julie's just amazing, you know. She she really is. I can't say how much she acts so nervous. Oh, coach, I don't know. And she's always, mm. and then she just locks in and throws strikes. Hi. It's a break and leaves just the three. She dropped that ball. She lost that ball to the foul line. And I think what happened is she accelerated a little early out of the backswing for for those of you out there that drop the ball a lot, slow your swing down coming through. Let it swing and then get after it when it passes your foot. Now, if you pull on it early, you'll pull your hand right out of the ball. That was much better. Watch on this first shot now. She's walking to the foul line now. Here she goes right to the top of the back. She gets a little anxious and pulls on it right here. She pulls and, <coughs> and just pulls her thumb right out early and drops it. She grabbed that up. She just couldn't recover. Gardner leading by 11, working on a spare from the second. Right back in the pocket. Just a beautiful shot. She waited on that swing, kept her tempo. That's a big word in our sport, tempo, keeping that rhythm of your total body movements, your feet, your swing, even the way your mind works. There's a drum beat, that inner drum beat, that tempo that you try to lock in on, try to get it and just keep right there. There's so many similarities between this sport and the sport of golf, aren't there? Well, there is. I'll tell you, just unbelievable. I'm just now learning a little bit about golf, and it's amazing. It's the similarities. I mean, the lingo is the same. The tempo. You want to lock in. You want to get into the zone. You, all these things. You want to be able to repeat your swing in golf. You want to be re able to repeat your stroke in bowling. Pre-shot routine. Setting your hand over the hand dryer. Wiping your ball off the same every time. Using your rosin bag. Getting a habit created. Mm. Getting yourself to where you can just do it. Even if you blank out, you just go through those motions. Just do it so naturally without having to think about it because you've just, it's like a record player. You play it over and over and over. Betke trying to pull to within one. Won't do it on that shot. Just didn't, get, four seven. just didn't get through that shot uh, quite good enough, Dave. She didn't get the arm to extend through toward the six and then let the ball react on the back end. And, and that's probably because she knows that ball's shiny. She moved out and she said, boy, better not swing it out the window. Swing it out, swing it out, not too much, and you pull on it and pull it back with the arm. Hmm. There we are. Still down 11. 48 games ago, they started. Mm. Grueling test to become the national amateur champion. Well, it really is, because they change the conditions every day, too. We change them every day, four days in a row. We're bowling here in one house, synthetic house. So every day we change the oil to make sure that we test these players' skills. Sort of an excuse me strike for Gardner there. Yeah, that was a major break. She had the strike set up. She threw it real good on 27, come back over on 28. She lost it the last time on 28. That time she sort of grabbed on and pulled it, pulled it left of her target, and she got the break. Working on three in a row. And leaves the seven. Right back at you, they say. Mm. Well, you get one break and... <laughs> Not that one. You know, when, when you're bowling against your opponent, you just look at him and say, how do you like it? No, <laughs> no, you, no, you don't. <laughs> we teach our players that's a no-no. Fred, just being around you this uh, week, I, I just imagine you teaching a lot of positive imagery to your players. Oh, yeah, the picture of taking that mind uh, can project to your uh, little brain cell up there. You know, yeah, positive mental imagery is something you sit at home in your easy chair and picture yourself throwing strikes, mm -hmm. picture yourself winning championships, and then it's not so hard when you go try to do it in person. Right. 
Betke seems to have found her rhythm on the right side. Yes, she has. She's, she's rolled the ball very clean off of her hand, and that's her biggest uh, attribute. This gal can lay it down and roll it, much like Earl Anthony on the left side. Earl is a roll-type player. This gal doesn't play tug-of-war with it. She's not a power player. She uses that brain cell real good and makes the equipment changes, changes the angle, and just constantly lays it down and lets it roll and lets the ball do the roll and right to the pocket. Can get right back in the match with a strike here. And there it is. <laughs> Mixes it up for a strike in the sixth frame, and Betke is pulled to within 10. We'll be back with the championship finals of the Peachtree Lanes in Atlanta in a moment. We're in Atlanta, and we are joined by Gladys Banker, the WIBC president. She's also uh, president of the National Bowling Council, our sponsor for this event. And I'll tell you, this lady is a great leader in our sport. She works countless hours as a volunteer president of the Women's International Bowling Congress, the president of the National Bowling Council, and we want to thank Gladys for all the hard work she's done for us. I should say. Gardner leaving by 10, bowling in the sixth. A little high and knocks out the split. Oh, what a break. A major break, moving pins around. Again, if she'd, she'd thrown this ball a little softer, those pins wouldn't have jumped around like that. See, that's velocity. You know, people are, I call it hook happy. They want to throw the big hook. Watch here. Watch this reaction. Watch your eyes. Oh, wow. She smiles. And the easy seven was all that was left to retain her 10 pin lead. Here we are down to the last four frames. This gal, to my knowledge, could be the only person in the history of our sport to repeat being the national amateur champion. And that is really something with over 40,000 people last couple of years to repeat. Wow. Oh, it doesn't get out of the split that time. Leaves the 5-7. See, so she made the good adjustment on the right lane. She sort of lost the ball a couple times. She thought, boy, I got to get through this. She got through it, hung on with the thumb just a little bit. The thumb blocked the fingers out from hitting the ball, and the ball skidded past the pocket, leaving the 5-7. Just didn't quite flip over because the thumb was in a little long. Crucial shot. And she knew she missed it as soon as she let it go. Hits the five head on and an open for Julie Gardner in the seventh frame. There's the president of the USTBF, Joyce Deitch, who is looking at the scoreboard and seeing that Mary Betke has taken the lead. I guarantee in that line the numbers were rolling to see exactly where it stands. And Betke takes command. Three in a row now for Mary Betke. What a nice shot she threw there. Playing for the National Amateur Championship. Here we are, the last three frames to play. And this little lady goes up there and just rolls that ball right off the corner and just blew that rack right out. Jerry Koenig also on hand here in Atlanta, the executive director of the USTBF. Well, what a nice man to work with, I'll mm -hmm. tell you. He's a lawyer, very bright, very organized. It's a great job for USTBF. Better hook. Ooh. It's the second really tough spare washout again for uh, Mary Betke. She had one in the first frame. She wrapped that ball a little in behind her back. And when she wrapped that ball in behind her back, it made her hand spin around the top of the ball, and that ball helicoptered down the lane. If you spin your arm, then you spin your hand. You've got to keep your arm on line to keep the fingers through the back of the ball to make the ball roll. Well, she almost made this in the first. Let's Better see if hook. she can do it here. Nope. And an open frame for Mary Betke to leave the door open for Julie Gardner in the eighth frame. We have got us a match here, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. This is within pins. 
Depends if she spares and strikes, it would be a four pin match. Head on again, knocks out the six and seven and leaves the ten. I think maybe the lanes have dried out just a little bit. Maybe uh, Julie should move over to the left of the board and, and allow that ball out. And I'm sure these gals are starting to feel the, the, the pressure a little bit. This mm -hmm. is this has been a long grinding week, and here you are right down the last few frames. So Becky concentrating, trying to gather herself for the ninth and ten. Gardner converts the spare in the eighth. Now the foundation frame the ninth for Julie Gardner. We just said a key word there, the foundation frame. In bowling, this is probably one of the most important frames to get that strike. Every bowler keys in strong in the ninth because now we get the three shots at him in the tenth. There it is, a strike for Gardner and a four pin lead. Bethke will try to put the pressure on here with her ninth and tenth frames. She seems to like this right hand lane much better than the left hand lane. So it surprised me at all. She gets right back and answers the challenge here. Hold it. Tough break in the ninth. Yeah, she got a little soft. You know, she went by the pocket, by the pocket twice, even though it was on the other lane. And that time she said, I need to soften up a little bit with this polished ball. And that ball overreacted. How do you make this one? Well, you try to hit the left side. And you've got to hit that four pin and bounce it into the eight and try to get it to domino fashion across. Right there, she's at it. Oh. oh. Excellent effort. And a crucial open frame for Betke in the ninth to leave the door wide open for Gardner. She needs to throw a double to force Julie to mark here to become the national amateur champion. She needs this first one. This is a must strike. Work it. Yes. Isn't it fun to watch these people perform like this under pressure? I mean, her knees just have to be shaking and her stomach's jumping and her hands are trembling and she just threw that ball perfect. And you know, the key is she's not bowling real good right now. Her confidence level isn't at the highest. Mm -hmm. she isn't, and, and to get up there and do it then is really, really a, a major challenge. And that's what champions are made out of. How do you fight that when you're not bowling well? You've got to re-wipe the slate clean before the next shot. Forget the past. Hold it. Right there. Well, she forced Gardner to mark in the 10th. And there's a lot of the snow. You know, it's not always that easy to go up there and get a mark when yeah. you need it. Right. Especially if you have a little time to think about it. Julie has some time now. She knows exactly. Julie knows in her own mind exactly where the match stands right now because Julie's a number watcher. Some people are, some people aren't. But Julie likes to know what the count is, what the number is. We saw her eyes nervously glancing at that scoreboard. Strong finish for Becky in the tenth. And now Gardner needs a spare and four to win it. Spare and stay behind the foul line and keep it out of those <laughs> big gray boards on the side. Well, you know, she's not thinking spare. Right here, she's thinking, let me get up here and throw one shot and just crush it right in the pocket for the National Amateur Championship. She came put it out with the four, yeah. She just put it right in the pocket and just tried to just crush them pins out. She got a one pin spare. It looks like uh, this young lady's going to repeat. Sure does. This spare and then four pins would do it for Julie Gardner. Two straight national amateur championships. That's unbelievable. All the great amateur women bowlers across this nation. This gal can do it two years in a row. That is unbelievable. There it is. Now just keep this one in the lane. On the lane. Keep it out of them two big gray areas on the side. <laughs> uh, they're called channels, not gutters. Right. We, you know, the old slang was the gutters. We don't like that. We like the channels. It's we a, don't like the channels. It's a kinder, gentler term, isn't yes, it? it is. Yes, yeah. it is. It's a little smoother for our sport. That's for sure. 
We're in the Bush administration. We have this kinder, gentler game, but Gardner trying to be not so kind and not so gentle, and she isn't. Closes it with a strike. Julie Gardner, two-time national amateur champion. Gardner overwhelmed by winning her second straight national amateur championship. We'll be back to talk with her and present her the award when we come back to the Peachtree Lanes in Atlanta, Georgia in a moment. To the victor go the spoils. Congratulations, Julie Gardner, two-time national amateur champion. Jerry Kenny with a presentation. Thank you, Jerry. And thanks to Fred Borden and Kim Terrell, I'm Dave Armstrong saying so long from Peachtree Lanes in Atlanta, Georgia. Once again, Julie Gardner, your champion for 1991.